Georgia is known for suppressing its voters. And unfortunately, that trend continued in 2019 when the ACLU found that they purged their polls of 200,000 voters. The Palast Investigative Fund report, Georgia voter poll purge errors, said that the Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger's office removed 198,351 people from the voting registration list last year on the faulty premise that they moved without notifying the state. So this is a common tactic that's used by states that wish to suppress their voters. What they'll do is they'll claim that they just want to verify the address of the registered voter. And then they'll send in this tiny little card in the mail where the person living in that address, the registered voter, needs to confirm that they're still living in that address. The problem is it's very easy to mistake that little card as nothing more than junk mail. To be quite honest with you, I've made that mistake in the past. And so this is how they can just purge their polls of literally, in this case, hundreds of thousands of voters and then turn around and say, no, 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 we didn't do anything wrong. We sent that notice in the mail and they didn't respond back. So we had to get them out of the polls. We didn't want any voter fraud. Now, many of those voters who represent Get this, 63% of the 313,243 voter names purged in October of 2019 may not realize what's happened until the next time they try to vote. And by the way, this is again, a common strategy that's used, especially in states like Georgia. For instance, the state's voter registration cancellation policies drew controversy, as you guys know, in 2018 during the gubernatorial election when just 54,700 votes separated then Secretary of State Brian Kemp, who's now the current governor, and Democrat Stacey Abrams. In July of 2017, Kemp's office canceled a record 591,000 voter registrations. By the way, since 2017, only 87,000 voters re-registered to be able to vote. So I just want to go over the numbers one more time to give you a sense of scale and what's happening here. So Kemp did it twice. He did a voter purge in 2017 and 2019. So the 2017 numbers are the ones Anna just read you with over 591,000 people purged. Now she pointed out 87,000 re-registered. So on that alone, think about it. That means 87,000 people for sure were blocked from voting when they very likely would have voted because they bothered to re-register. So they're still in Georgia, they're still alive, they're still reg they're still real people. So at a bare minimum, they got rid of those 87,000 voters. Now, you're gonna be shocked to find out the voters they get rid of are largely minorities and heavily Democratic voters. So mm -hmm. Kemp wins the election by 54,000 votes. So. That's the 2017 purge. And the 2019 purge, 313,000 voters are purged. And it turns out 200,000 of them were purged at a minimum faulted, right? So they were wrong in purging the 200,000. So easily, easily could have made the difference in a 54,000 vote election. And that's why he did it. <laughs> so Anna, the this, Type of cheating by the Republicans have now been well documented. This is another really important documentation that Greg Palast and, and the ACLU worked on. I'm really glad they did this, and it needs to be documented and fixed. Uh, and by the way, they need to re-register all those people. Um, uh, and so, but the problem is, as you talk about all the time, Anna, uh, there's not there's a disproportionate, uh, uneven playing field here. So mm -hmm. the Republicans purge voters in every state they're in and wind up winning barely in places like Georgia. It's not really a win, but they did it through cheating. Whereas the Democrats never counter, never counter. The, the best they do is complain about it afterwards, but they can never effectively stop it in the first place. And in my opinion, and I know people will lose their minds, uh, every time they do it in a red state, the Democrats should do it in a blue state. Um, look, we've got, uh, Republican uh, governors in Massachusetts, Vermont, Maryland. Uh, you got Republican governors all over blue states. If the Democrats did anything like the Republicans do, you'd never have a Republican governor in those states. 
Uh, but the Democrats don't fight. They never, ever, ever fight. And I'm not saying the Democrats should do it in a way that's illegal, of course not. And should they get rid of Republican voters uh, from the, the polls uh, unfairly? Not if there's an even playing field, but in order to force the Republicans to the table, I'd certainly take a look at who should be purged in the blue states. But no Democrat would ever agree with me. They say, oh my God, oh, he's suggesting playing hardball. No, our job is to just cry afterwards after we lose. No, for God's sake, play hardball, force them to the table, not so that both sides can cheat, but so that you could stop their cheating. Right, exactly. And so I just want everyone to understand that Despite what you might hear in cable news, despite what some of the polling might indicate, Joe Biden is an underdog in this general election. And it's not because of his ideology, although I would argue his ideology is also a bit of a problem. But aside from that, let's say you have a strong Democratic candidate who polls well, who has the majority of the country on his side. None of that matters unless you protect people's right to vote unless you do something to fight back against the unprecedented voter suppression that we're seeing right now in various states all of the, all of the stuff that's happening right now all of the political theater the the DNC the R none of that stuff matters the only thing that matters is that democrats do what it takes to get Louis DeJoy out of the post office as postmaster general i mean they held those hearings I don't know what happened after that. It's been pretty much silence since those meetings were held. I mean, if if I were part of Democratic leadership, if anyone who wanted to fight were actually part of Democratic leadership, every single day screaming from the rooftops, these people are undemocratic. These people are purging people from the polls, just nonstop. Republicans know how to make a mountain out of a molehill. Democrats, they're like, well, we held the hearings. And then we sat back and thought things would just work out. Or, well, we passed the stimulus bill in the House. Now the ball is in the GOP's court. No, no, wakey, 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 wakey. Get some Benghazi mindset in, in your head. Because what Republicans do is they'll take an issue and they won't let it go. Democrats, on the other hand, they're like, let's focus on shaming the progressives who haven't committed to voting for Biden yet. Okay, great, that's not gonna get you anywhere. What are you gonna do to ensure that everyone who wants to vote can vote and that their vote will be counted? That's what matters here. I'll give you one small example. There are thousands of these, but Republicans of Fox News made a big deal once of Obama saluting the generals with coffee in his hand. Okay, Donald Trump just said our fallen soldiers are suckers and losers. Total disparity, right? So that it, you know, Joe Biden at least made a comment about uh, the suckers and losers. Uh, the Republicans are like, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I don't care. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Um, and meanwhile, they made a huge federal case of it. Look, there's a thousand examples. Obama. So we got four people died in Benghazi. They did nine hearings. Never found anyone at fault. Never ever. But they went on, it's after the seventh one, they decided to do eight, they decided to do a ninth, because they never ever let it go. Why? Because they know it's about marketing, drilling it into people's heads, whether it's real or not real. Whereas we now have over 190,000 dead because of coronavirus. We're literally the worst in the world in dealing with it. How many hearings have the Democrats held on uh, whether the mass arrived on time, whether there was enough testing, whether they did contact tracing, and how many times have they said Trump caused the deaths of 190,000 people? So it's just so it disproportionate. Just needs, it needs to be repetitive, it needs to be daily, and now is the time for them to be incredibly persistent and relentless and we're just not seeing that, right? It, you're right, the political theater is important, the messaging is important. And they try a little bit of it, I think they fumble each time and then they just let it go. And it's just not gonna work, especially when you're up against um, a master propagandist like Donald Trump and his cronies. They're real good at propaganda as well. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges, 
you got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.